But in my opinion, one of the things that sets him apart from everybody else is that he he's not running away from you and not getting hit. He's running at you and not getting hit. True. I mean, he's coming straight forward and then cutting angles and doing things to you that you didn't anticipate, and he's yeah. not there for the counters. Yeah. So he's fighting correctly. Yeah. Seamless, too. Yeah, and it's incredibly exciting. Yeah, and is. that was one of the, the, the criticisms of him really early on in his reign was that he wasn't finishing guys. Mm -hmm. And then he knocked out Joseph Benavidez, and then he started finishing guys in the final seconds of the round. Right. You know, I mean, he's he's just a monster, man. He is, man. He he's is. a fucking monster. But he fights correctly. Mm -hmm. How close to press conference time did this all come together in terms of uh, the signatures on the paper for Khabib and Connor? Um, yeah, we, well, we got it done in the last couple of days. Which side agreed first? They both agreed. Both sides agreed. Th th this, is, this is a fight between two straight killers who are coming out of the gate straight after each other, head to head. Everybody agreed to this fight. Everybody wanted this fight. Th there was really no problems putting this fight together. It's, it's what makes Conor McGregor such a... a, a, a international superstar. This guy fights anybody, anywhere, anytime. After a two-year layoff, he comes right out the gates and wants Habib, and Habib, who's undefeated and, and obviously destroyed everybody in front of him, wants this fight now and wants to defend his title against Conor McGregor. Two guys in their prime, two animals, and I, I obviously I'm happy, the world is happy, and I can't wait. Speaking of the world, are we going to see a world tour for this? I, Khabib alluded to that when I spoke to him last week. I don't know if we'll do a world tour for this thing. You know, we, we don't have a lot of time. These guys have to start training for this fight. It's early October, um, but we'll do some fun things for, w w with the media. Well, hopefully a trip to Toronto is, uh, is upon us. Um, you said this could be the biggest fight of all time in terms of the UFC. Are we talking over $2 million? Yeah, I, I, in the $2 million ballpark, yeah. We're, we're, we're looking at $2 million pay-per-view buys. Nate Diaz afterwards tweeted, forget the UFC, I'm not doing this. I don't know if you saw that. But anything to that? That's Nate Diaz. <laughs> so we, we have a guy who works in our company who is a huge believer in the Diaz brothers and champions everything in the company for the Diaz brothers. So I'm going to let him handle that, not me. All right, Hunter Campbell, you've got a job ahead of that, you. That would be the guy. <laughs> and um, finally, with uh, New York, if that's the co-main event, how big are we, look, are we shooting for for uh, Madison Square Garden? Yeah, I'm... I'm what are we shooting for? Like in terms of a main event, like how big are we shooting for? Uh, we're shooting big. We're <laughs> shooting big. We, 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 we obviously, every time we've ever gone to uh, New York City and, and MSG, and we've always delivered, and we will deliver this time too. And finally, last week in Calgary, um, Faraz Zahabi said if there was one last fight for George St. Pierre, and it could be against anybody, he said it would be Anderson Silva. There have been rumblings about this fight. Is that a fight that you guys are trying to make right now? We have literally not even talked about that fight, and we're not in the process of making it. Okay, uh, right, 30 seconds. So Garbrandt's going to come out one of two ways. He's either going to be angry and emotional, so he's going to stand his ground, he's going to throw his, throw his right hand over and over again, or he's going to come out relaxed and be moving away and dancing. Dillashaw's going to come out and throw kicks to open up his punching combinations or punches to open up his takedowns, and he's going to be switching his footwork and changing his angles, but I also think he's going to be working for takedowns a lot more in this round, uh, in, in this fight. Uh, and ultimately, it depends on you know who who can uh, you know who can keep their cool and not uh, not get too emotional because last time Garbrandt paid for it by getting caught up in uh, you know in, in a bit of a trade and standing his ground when he could have moved away. There you go, thirty seconds. Who wins? Watch, watch inside the octagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the longer version, uh, who wins, Dan? Um, you know, I'm leaning towards TJ again. I think he's got more options. There's no doubt about it that Cody Garbrandt has, has, you know, he's got the ability to stop everybody with one punch. There's no doubt about that. And he's a very intelligent boxer if he keeps his cool. But he just struggles so much to keep his cool against Dillashaw. I don't know yeah. how, how he's going to cope when the fight actually arrives. I think he's going to feel the pressure. I think he's going to feel all the build up on his shoulders. And I think he's going to get emotional again. And that's where TJ does his best work because... When someone stands their ground, he dances around him and makes them look slow. Um, I, and I just think, although he's not got the same kind of stopping power that, that Cody's got, I think he's got so many different skills that he can bring. He might even, you know, start wrestling, uh, start getting Cody to defend takedowns and then catch him with a knee or an elbow or something like that. He's going to try something that Cody's not seen in sparring before. All right, Kenny, no denying Cejudo's improvement since that first meeting. Yep. That was April of 2016. Back-to-back -back wins for Cejudo over Wilson Hayes and Sergio Pettis. But 
completely different striking coaches and really a striking approach since we saw in April of 2016. Your thoughts on what we might see this weekend. Right, and, and Manpreet said it. You know, for Demetrius Johnson, if they're running a 400-meter run, uh, Demetrius Johnson is basically 200 meters ahead of everybody in that division already. So it's going to be very difficult for you to catch up. Now, Henry Cejudo has probably made up some ground there. He's probably maybe only like 50 to 100 meters behind, but it's still 50 or 100 meters behind. Right. Demetrius Johnson just has so many weapons, and there's so many ways for him to win this fight. Now, for Cejudo, um, anything can happen in a fight, right? You can knock out anybody, it happens. Um, but... The way that Cejudo can win this fight is by neutering uh, Demetrius Johnson. Basically, be all the way on the outside, get him to respect the hands, and take him down repeatedly. You're talking about Cejudo, uh, a guy who is uh, an Olympic gold medalist wrestler. Demetrius Johnson is very good with his wrestling, but certainly not at the level of a Henry Cejudo. Um, and I think Cejudo hits just hard enough and fast enough where he can get respect to set up those takedowns very well. But I just don't see it happening. I think it's going to be a tougher fight and certainly a longer fight than the yeah. first time around. But I see Demetrius Johnson winning this fight. Let's go by decision. DJ, by decision for Ken Flo is the pick to click. Yeah, first fight, two minutes and 49 yeah. seconds. <laughs> and I know from Cejudo's standpoint, he felt like there's not even much to analyze there because the fight was over before Did it started. A, didn't get a chance to really yeah. show what he could do. Yeah. All right, main event, man, pre UFC Bantamweight Championship rematch. TJ Dillashaw minus 120, Cody Garbrandt minus 110. So you do get an underdog point here on our show for Cody. Um, so Dillashaw or Garbrandt for you, man, Preet, and ultimately how do they get it done? Uh, Ken Flo, <laughs> Dillashaw, Garbrandt, who do you like? A absolutely fascinating fight. Um, Again, I'll never forget that image of oh. TJ Dillashaw after the fight in his face, just yelling that primal scream, just amazing stuff. Um, so, yeah, listen, I didn't think that TJ fought the best fight uh, against Cody Garbrandt. He was playing with fire throughout that whole fight. Um, I thought that his approach was wrong, and I also thought that Cody got away from his strategy. Cody started out as a counter-striker. And, you know, we see him as this explosive guy with tremendous offense. What makes Cody Garbrandt great is his counter offense. It's his ability to counter you. It's his ability to make you miss, and then he'll come back with ferocity. There's no better demonstration of that than in the fight against Dominic Cruz, who is known as a counter fighter himself. And, and the great part of that was that he got Dominic to come forward. He was patient against perhaps the most patient fighter, or what was the most patient fighter in Dominic Cruz. Right. He lost his patience against TJ Dillashaw. He caught him in the first round, and he said, you know what, I got this guy's number. I'm going to knock him out in the second round. Did not pan out that way. Yeah. He has tremendous eyes. He has tremendous vision to see a lot of strikes. That's why he's able to counter you and move his head and move his feet the way he does and kind of point at you and laugh and, you know, pop and lock during a fight. Right. But what he didn't see so well and what maybe he doesn't see so well is the kicking game. And T.J. Dillashaw has a very tricky uh, kicking game primarily because, as Matt Preet said, he switches his stance very well. So you don't know where the kick is coming from. Uh, Cody did not see that kick. He got hurt by it, and that allowed TJ to eventually get the knockout win because I think he was still a little bit stunned from that shot. Now, the way he did it was very dangerous. That was Cody's domain. You cannot stand in the pocket and trade like that with someone like Cody. He was lucky to do it. Cody was a little bit slower. Why? Because I think he was still hurt from that kick. Now, TJ can fight better. Cody could fight better. Both these guys. I think TJ has more weapons. But I think that the way that these guys match up, I think Cody wins this fight. And again, I don't know if it's because I want to see these guys fight for a third yeah. time. I think it's it could perhaps be the, the most fascinating trilogy in UFC history based on their skill, based on the fact that you have two fighters in their prime going at it and the story behind it. Yeah. It is just fascinating to me. I love both of these fighters. I think these are two fighters that are taking the game to the next level as well. Yeah. Um, truly, with mixed martial arts skill. Um, this is a hard one for me to pick. I love both of these guys. I am going to go with Cody this one. Think he gets the finish? I think he gets the finish. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go with decision for Cody. All right, decision oh. for Cody Garbrandt. How about that?